If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and try to solve the question on your own before listening on. Our first step is to take a look at the equation that gives us the magnitude of the linear acceleration of a yo-yo. And so here is the equation that gives the linear acceleration of a yo-yo, which was derived in the body of the text of this chapter. Since we're trying to find the magnitude of the linear acceleration, we can actually take the absolute value of both sides of this equation. And when we take the absolute value of the right-hand side, the negative sign will be dropped. In the expression, g, of course, is the acceleration due to gravity, 9.8 meters per second squared. We have i com, which is the rotational inertia about the center of mass of the yo-yo. m is the mass itself. And then r is the radius of the axle, which was given to us directly in the question. So we simply need to plug in all the known values. We'll have to change the rotational inertia into the standard unit of kilograms meters squared and the mass into kilograms. Alternatively, we can keep the mass and the rotational inertia in the given units and use 980 centimeters per second squared for g rather than 9.8 meters per second squared. That would actually probably be easier, so we'll go ahead and do that. Notice that since we're keeping the rotational inertia in terms of centimeters squared, as well as the gravitational constant in terms of centimeters, we have changed the millimeters for the axle radius into centimeters. So all we did is take the decimal point of the millimeters and simply move it over one place to the left. And so now we can pick up our calculators and process this computation. And when we crunch this down, we should get approximately 12.5 centimeters per second squared, or rounding to proper sig figs would give us 13 centimeters per second squared. So this would be the correct answer to part A of the question. Notice in the setup that the grams in the numerator here canceled with the grams there, the centimeters squared canceled with the centimeters squared here, and that left us with the unit of centimeters per second squared for the final answer. Now on to part B, which asks us how long does it take for the yo-yo to reach the end of the string? And this problem is essentially a kinematics problem where we can establish the initial velocity of the yo-yo to be 0 meters per second, the acceleration we just determined to be 13 centimeters per second squared. And for this part of the problem, we're actually going to have to keep the negative sign because the yo-yo is, in fact, accelerating downward. The displacement of the yo-yo is simply going to be the overall length of the yo-yo, which is stated as 120 centimeters. And again, since the yo-yo is traveling downward, we'll have to call that vertical displacement negative 120 centimeters. And then we're looking for the time. We can investigate the old equations of kinematics from earlier chapters, and we should come up with the following equation, which will help us find the time. Since the initial velocity is zero, this term will drop out of the equation. We can solve for time by multiplying both sides of the equation by two, dividing by acceleration, and then taking the square root. And then at this point, we can simply plug in the known values for the displacement and acceleration. For the acceleration, we've included the less rounded version to get some more accuracy for the time. When we crunch this down, we should get approximately 4.4 seconds for the time. So this would be the correct answer to part B. For part C, to find the linear speed, we can once again refer back to the equations of kinematics. We know that the final velocity would equal the initial velocity plus the acceleration of the center of mass multiplied by the time. Again, the initial velocity is zero, so we can ignore that term. And then we have the acceleration about the center of mass times the time that we just figured out. And this works out to be roughly negative 54.8 centimeters per second. And since the question simply wants the speed, we would actually have to take the absolute value of this velocity, giving us 54.8 centimeters per second. So this would be the correct answer to part C. For part D, to calculate translational kinetic energy, we simply use the expression 1 half times the mass times the speed about the center of mass squared. And we just figured out that speed. The mass was given earlier as 120 grams. In this case, we do want to convert to standard units, so we're actually going to use 0 0.120 kilograms rather than 120 grams. We'll change the final speed about the center of mass 
into meters per second by moving that decimal over two places to the left. So we'll have 0.548 meters per second, and then we won't forget to square it. And this works out to be roughly 1.8 times 10 to the minus 2 joules. So this is the correct answer to part D. For part E, to calculate the rotational kinetic energy, what we want to do is remember that angular speed is equal to the speed about the center of mass divided by the radius. And then we could turn to the expression for the rotational kinetic energy, which is equal to 1 half times the rotational inertia multiplied by the angular speed squared. This expression for angular speed can be substituted in for the omega of the kinetic energy equation. And then we can simply plug in the known values. Once again, since we're looking at energy, we want to keep everything in a standard unit. And so for the rotational inertia about the center of mass, this I com term, we're going to go ahead and convert that from grams centimeters squared into kilograms meters squared. And to do that, we can maybe show that through a couple of conversions. We know that one kilogram is equal to 1,000 grams and this way the grams will cancel. And then we know that one meter is 100 centimeters. But since we have centimeters squared in the conversion, we would need to square this conversion factor. And so this works out to be 9.5 times 10 to the minus 5 kilograms times meters squared. So this is going to be the rotational inertia in a standard unit. The speed about the center of mass We'll change that to a standard unit by pushing that decimal place over two places to the left. And then the radius also needs to be converted into meters, so we'll actually have to multiply this 3.2 by 10 to the minus 3 in order to convert it into meters. And when you crunch that all down, maybe we'll come over here, you should get approximately 1.4 joules for the rotational kinetic energy. And so this is the correct answer to part E. And then on to part F, as noted, the angular speed can be written as the linear speed divided by the radius of the spinning object. We have the linear speed as 0.548 meters per second, and then we can divide that by the radius of 3.2 times 10 to the minus 3 meters. And this should work out to approximately 1.7 times 10 to the power of 2 radians per second. And if you need to convert that into revolutions per second, we can simply remember that one revolution is equivalent to two pi radians. And so when you perform that conversion, you would get 27 revolutions per second. And so either one of these could be the correct answer to part F. Thanks for watching the video. If you liked it, click the thumbs up icon and subscribe. Also send in your own question to the email address shown on the screen and I will do my best to answer it on YouTube.